Hello and welcome back to I Hate Golf, It's Awesome, presented by Eat Golf. My name is Caleb Eberly, and sitting across the table from me today is the star of the show, Mark Eberly. How's it going? Hey, going great. You going to get off your phone so we can actually I am, do this? Yeah. I am. Doing some research. Do, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're actually doing some <laughs> research, research as we start filming. That's that's good. Um, so how's your, how's your week going so far? We're recording this on Tuesday. Early in the week, so it's going really, really well. Nothing, nothing casual. Said. So it's t-shirt day for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I put a polo on. If if I knew you were going to wear a shirt, I would have just worn a shirt. But this will give me a this will give me an excuse to go play golf afterwards. So that's always good. So you didn't do too well with your picks for the three M Open. Um, at least I wasn't close. <laughs> Missed the cut by six shots or seven yeah, shots. Yeah, I think it was five or six shots, something like that. Um, unfortunately, I didn't fare too well either. Fino, you had? I had Fino. And oh, the, so he's going to fire another caddy this week? He actually did, yeah. <laughs> I think his brother's caddying for him next week. So, yeah, you, you said that as a joke on Saturday, but it actually happened. So, um, yeah, just close. Tied for third, just um, Michael Thompson came away with it. Was able to hold it off on the on the last couple holes. It was. Did you watch any of it? I did not. You didn't watch any of it. I flipped through once or twice, and I saw your boy going backwards Saturday, and it's <laughs> like, here we go again. So yeah, well, I didn't watch hardly any. Yeah, yeah, I watched a little bit on Sunday morning, but I ended up just going to play golf instead of instead of finish watching. So it not a lot of people playing this week. Not the most interesting tournament in the world. Um, seems like more people will be back this week but after two weeks in Muirfield that's kind of to be expected some guys would take a take a week off especially since I mean the fields have been a lot stronger than I think they would have been if this was a normal season but with the with the three months off a lot of guys were playing playing events that they wouldn't normally right. play and true I don't think the 3M open was going to be a going to be a big tournament either way um the one interesting thing there was a there was a par four that was playing about like two ninety. Everyone was just going for the green. That was that was interesting to see at a at a tour event. Um, a, a par four that I could have drove. So that I could have driven. Driven, drove, whatever. <laughs> well, I can. Same. That's difference. been kind of the fad the last decade is on a championship golf course. Put that hole, maybe longer than that. I don't know. Put that hole in there that's drivable, but it's risk reward. Yeah. To generate excitement, yeah, and it's like even when you're playing, it's like, oh man, here's one I can go for. It's yeah. like I can't anymore, but it's you know I can remember when that would happen. It's like, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, and you end up making a six on a par four. Well, the risk reward really wasn't there. I think when I, I think maybe it was Friday or Saturday. I think there was only one bogey on that hole. It's, yeah, it wasn't set up to. It wasn't too a lot difficult. of trouble you could get into if you missed. No, I think average score was a birdie. I'm sure there were a couple eagles. So. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting idea, but I don't know. Guys hit it so much longer than they did five or ten years ago that it seems kind of seems like making it. I mean, you can make it up. Excuse me, excuse me. Zevia is getting to me. You can make it a three hundred and fifty <laughs> yarder, and people would still be driving the green and kind of playing it a similar way as if it was two ninety five or something like that. So. Yeah, that's um, that's our recap of the 3M Open. Not not a lot to talk about. Do you want to go ahead and make some picks for the WGC FedEx St. Jude Invitational? It's in I think Memphis. I can actually pick someone that's in the field this time. Yeah, you should be able to throw a dart and find someone this uh, week. So I was thinking, for some reason, I keep thinking Herschel's going to pop up. Mr. Billy Horschel's going to pop up and win one. Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could see that. He's, he's, he's played well, new. semi-well, and it's like if somebody gets a hot putter, and obviously he's capable of it. He hasn't done it for a while. Yeah. But now he maybe he's past that. And if, if you notice, a lot of those guys, they have, their, they have their heyday, and then there's kind of a drought. Yeah. And then you see them make a comeback. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that second life. And I think a lot of that is personal yeah. in their careers. Um, and I, I would, I would go with him this week. I think he's got a shot. Yeah, I could see that happening. He's, um, he's sitting. His odds aren't too bad. He's plus forty five hundred. So that's a, that's, that's a good bet to make. Um, I think the one thing, kind of watching golf come back, is it's not as random as people thinking that it might have been. I mean, last week with uh, Michael Thompson was kind of out of nowhere, obviously, but it hasn't been 
I don't know, guys haven't had a better opportunity since there was a long layoff. It's, it still seems like the guys at the top are the guys at the right. top. It's not, it's not people coming clear out of left field, winning tournaments and stuff like that. It's like, right. I'm sure, I'm sure players are taking advantage of the fact that certain players aren't playing certain weeks and you don't have as, as crowded of fields and some weeks you do, but, but it, it isn't as like, I don't know, as weird as people thought it might be. So one of the thing about it is too, is people don't realize is that, person coming out of nowhere to win they're still a really really good golfer yeah yeah you know, it's, it's not, not it's like not oh my goodness Joe that nobody. guy's never broken par before no yeah. it's like you know he he's done it and he's done it many many times yeah he's just never done it in that situation yeah yeah it's 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 still been golf um not a not a lot has changed with that um so yeah those are oh i need to make a pick i Totally yeah, forgot. you didn't make a pick. Uh, this ZV is really getting to me. You know, with Tiger. <laughs> no, when when's uh, when's Harding Park? Is that two weeks from now? Is that next weekend? You're asking the wrong person. Yeah, you don't pay attention. It's just just so you know, and it's like to defend myself. <laughs> oh gosh, you know, it's like after over 50 years living golf, mm-hmm. it's like the day or two when I get away from golf. I get away from golf. Yeah. I was like, you know, it's okay. It's fine. And it's not that I don't, I want to get away because I hate it. It's just getting a break from it. Yeah. And it's better off if I don't watch it, if I don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I, I, one of the main reasons I didn't watch as much this weekend and only watching a little bit on Sunday morning was baseball's back, obviously. So I, I spent my weekend watching baseball. Um, going to enjoy it while we can, since it seems like, seems like the season might last two weeks with the, with the outbreak going on with the Marlins and the Phillies quarantining and games being canceled all over the place so did you make your pick yet no i didn't make my pick i was i have about to baseball. tell you that that shirt it's kind of like the twilight there zone circling go. black and white thing that makes you dizzy I, it's like it's like my eyes fixate and i i like where am i it's different okay <laughs> it's 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 see it's nike breaking through and making different golf shirts i thought it was fly fishing at first and then i saw the golf flag <laughs> Stop mocking. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make a pick so make you'll stop pick. talking. Um, ah, do I want to pick Bryson? That seems boring. Oh, really? He's got uh, no shot. Where are they playing? I didn't even hear you. Memphis, uh, TPC Southwind, or I think that's what Southwind. I think uh, that's what it's called. Again, it's like every three names, a name change, sponsor change. So I don't know anymore. I don't remember what the name of the course. I am a throwback. I prefer when they had a celebrity's name on it or something like that. Yeah, you knew what it was. Yeah, TPC Southwind in Memphis. So not too far north from us. Make a um, pick. Okay, um, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil. Is he playing the senior tour this week? <laughs> <laughs> Phil's gonna Phil's gonna come out of nowhere and surprise everyone. He'll be know? in the top he'll be in the top ten after Friday. If he doesn't win, he's gonna get a lot of great sponsorship for whoever's on his coffee cup this week because he has been making a point to get that in the shots. I don't think I've seen <laughs> any tour player put their coffee cup down on the green while they're putting. So <laughs> He's getting that sunglass money, he's getting the apparel money, and now he's getting the coffee money. So. Well, he's at the age where he's a coffee guy, too. Yeah. So it's, he's not drinking monsters anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's coffee in that mug. So I'm going to go with Phil. He is, uh, what are his odds? Phil against Billy. Phil against Billy. I don't know what Phil's odds are, but they're not great. He's, he's way down the list. I think so. I've got you this week. He's plus 10,000. So you're plus 4,500. I'm plus 10,000. Yeah, I've got for, you this week. For once, I actually went off the board a little bit, which is weird to think that going off the board with Phil is a thing. He's 50, he and he is, doesn't win anymore. Yeah, I know. Well, this week he's going to. Good luck with that. All right, so we've got our picks done. We recapped briefly the 3M Open. Let's Let's get into the main topics for the week. You have something that you wanted to talk about that you you you've wanted to talk about for a long time, which you've talked to me about quite often, but you haven't talked about it on this podcast. Go ahead and go ahead and pitch your idea. Well, we I've talked about this for a long time. I'm just not meaning a couple of months. I've talked about this for years. Mm-hmm. It made sense to me. Obviously, being in other sports and a fan of other sports, I've never understood why there wasn't team golf. Mm-hmm when the most exciting event in golf is team golf. Mm-hmm. And if you want to build loyalty in your brand, have an Orlando team, mm-hmm. have a Memphis team, have a Cincinnati team, have a Chicago team, and 
I don't know, you have 32 teams, 36 teams, whatever it is, with 8 to 12 players, mm -hmm. and you have divisions, and you play. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have matches every week. And to me, it's just, I mean, one is you don't lose any sponsor money. In fact, you probably gain it. The players, I believe, would make more money because they can still get their individual sponsorships, but now they can get team spots sponsorships. And I think the prize money would be more consistent. Mm -hmm. And if you have eight or 12 guys and you only have to play six or eight, the guys still don't have to play every week. Yeah. You know, they could still play their 16 to 20 times a year. Yeah. And then there's a buildup to playoffs. I mean, think about how exciting golf team playoffs would be yeah. with Tiger and Phil on opposing teams and opposing leagues. Assuming they can make the playoffs. Think about those matches. Yeah. You know, that to me that would be but you know, my only weakness when it comes to that was being able to fund it. Yeah. I mean <laughs> yeah. To, to me I just I think it was a no brainer. And in fact, the more I thought about it, it's like, okay, why don't we start with a class A mm -hmm. league and have four teams. Yeah. I think it's like, gee, I don't want to take anything else on. But if someone out there wants to join me yeah. as a commissioner, yeah. I'll make you the commissioner <laughs> and we'll start this. <laughs> and we could have we could have Orlando, West Palm, Jacksonville, what, Gainesville. Yeah. I mean, how easy would that be? Well, Rob Manfred might be out of a job soon, so maybe he could switch from being the MLB <laughs> commissioner to your commissioner. So. Well, I mean, it's like we want someone qualified. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, that is interesting because and one of the reasons I want to talk about is the PGL is back in the news this week a little bit with the – I'm pretty sure that stands for the Premier Golf League. I didn't bother to look it up, but it has to stand for the Premier Golf League. I don't know what else PGL could stand for. But they are kind of proposing something similar, but on a, on a more – elite scale i guess there it's something going to be like 12 teams playing around the world but only four players on a team so i i think what they're trying to do is kind of make something that's above the pga tour right. that something enticing for the kind of the best 48 players from the pga tour to leave and go play on that because obviously they're they're supposedly going to be able to throw more money at them and stuff like that it's only going to be a it's going to be a short shorter season so they'd still be able to play the tour unless unless the tour decides to not let players from the pgl play on the tour which probably isn't going to happen i mean guys are still going to go back and at least play the majors right, it's at like, least sorry you can't play here. yeah it's well it's that that's kind of a throwback to the Greg Norman effort years ago. Yeah. I don't remember how long ago, but he, he wanted to create this elite tournament series. Yeah. And the PGA said, Greg, don't do that. And he said, okay, I won't do it. Yeah. I'm sure that's kind of a <laughs> yeah gross summary, but it was kind of, that's what happened. You didn't buck the existing system. Yeah. And yeah. It's any, anything the PGA tour would try to do as far as limiting guys ability to play would just be out of spite. And it's at this point, it's just going to look worse for the PGA tour to try to do something like that. They, I don't really think they they would have the pull to be able to actually get people to say, I'm not going to watch the PGL. I'm loyal to the PGA tour. It's like people are going to watch the best golf that's available. Right. That's, well, and the, and the PGA is PGA of America. I'm pretty sure is the Ryder cup. Yeah. So who knows? That probably brings in ninety percent of their annual revenue. Yeah. I don't know, but it has to be something astronomical. Yeah. Um, because so obviously there's some people that don't want to see this stuff happen. Oh, for sure. But yeah. Right now, I've just committed to starting a a class A <laughs> golf professional golf league. I wasn't expecting this. I think that can happen. I mean, it, it could definitely happen. Um, I, I do like the idea of, of having kind of regional teams. Th let me throw this at you. What about if teams weren't, um, weren't necessarily based by region? Like you didn't have an Orlando team and an Atlanta team. What if you had sponsored teams like Team Titleist, Team Callaway, because I, I thought about this when TaylorMade did their, did their awesome driving relief um, 
te- televised event um, that they just pulled off flawlessly. Um, I thought about, obviously, those are all tailor-made guys that are playing that because it's a tailor-made event. What if you had kind of that that brand team? What if, what if I mean, I guess you could have an Orlando team, but also have a Callaway team. What, what do you think about that idea? Well, to me, you would, you would have, it's just pick. Pick reasonable. In fact, it doesn't even have to, you know, for, to start small, you don't have to be a city. Yeah. I mean, you could be Daytona, you could be Orlando, Jacksonville, you could be St. Augustine. Yeah. Um, you need six guys. You don't think you can go into a community and say, hey, do you want to come out and play? Uh, we're going to play, you know, we're going to play Thursday, Friday. We're going to play at one o'clock and we're going to play matches against so and so. Yeah. And right now we can't even pay you, but you get to play free. Yeah. And you're a professional. Yeah. How many college guys just graduated from their golf team working in office thinking, wish I could still compete somewhere? Yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, the, to me, the problem with golf has always been the limited access. And it's not just what traditionally they talk about kids getting in. It's like, where do guys go that are players that aren't good enough to make the tour or the next tour? Or the it's yeah. like a lot of those have just the little mom and pop mini tours have disappeared. Yeah. When I played, you know, a guy would show up and say, hey, throw in 300 bucks this week. I'm going to take 20 percent off the top and you guys are going to play for three days and we'll, we'll divide up the money. Yeah. And 75 golfers would show up. Yeah. You know, that's when. Even guys before they got on the tour were playing there for a few weeks to tune up. Yeah. So that's kind of gone. Yeah. Um, to me, I like the stability of of having a community, and it's like you're from here, you're representing your community, and let's see if we can get. You know, Titus isn't going to do it. Yeah. But see if we can get some companies. You know, Joe's Car Wash, <laughs> <laughs> and you wear that on your sleeve. I don't know. It's just anything to generate some revenue to get it started. Yeah. Because you know, to me, the setback is you're going to pay the golf course. Yeah. You know, they, they can be a sponsor, but you're going to pay them as well. Yeah. Outside of that, the golfers aren't going to demand revenue. I guarantee you I can find guys that want to go out and compete. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's just the way golfers are. Well, I didn't I didn't I thought you were just going to pitch this idea. I didn't think you were going to actually work through all the steps. And I, I can see the gears turning in your head about as how soon to as I find a commissioner, we're <laughs> off and running. Well, and I, and I immediately start thinking about it kind of from the media side and the production side. And it's like stuff has developed so much now that you could have everything on YouTube. You could have everything live streamed on Twitch. It's like you wouldn't have to yep. you wouldn't have to throw it, to figure out how to be on the outdoor channel or golf channel or yep. something like that it's he like sends, you could do everything yourself and send out six guys with steady cams yeah it's it, <laughs> it's it'd like be so easy to do put a gopro on the caddy's bag yeah <laughs> it's it's, like, it's it would be so easy to do yeah, yeah maybe the, maybe we're actually going to do this it is well again it's not saying you couldn't go out and find money yeah. to make it bigger but it's like you know again you know me and the way i functioned it's like if you're going to do it you do it whether there's anything there to do it with or not. Yeah. You just, okay, there's a way to find out, figure out how to start this. And you start it yeah. and see where it goes. Yeah. Do you want to know who your commissioner should be? I'm waiting for this one. Anyone but me. <laughs> I will not. I, will, I, I want to be on the record here and saying I will not be your commissioner. <laughs> so you're going to have to find someone on your own. Oh, boy. That took a lot of pressure <laughs> off. <laughs> No, I think I think it I think it could be a I think it's a good idea. I think it definitely could work. Um, yeah, I mean it's it. I, I think when you think of of a new a new tour or a new league or golf, everyone thinks it has to be bigger than what's already there. It has to be bigger and better. But I think really all you need it just needs to be different. Right. It's like. The, the, the tour it can be, it can be the XFL yeah, of golf. It's like the the tour is it, the tour is going to still be there whether we did something like this whether something like the PGL actually exists. The tour is still going to be there. Is it going to change a little bit? Sure, but the way the tour is, it's going to be pretty much the same until it doesn't exist. Do you want to know the real advantage you have over established professional sports? What? There's nothing to protect. Yeah. They have to protect themselves. That's why they're so cautious. That's why they're so restrictive. Yeah. If you go out there and it's like, we don't have anything to protect. Yeah. Let's try this. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. 
So well, and that's why I think you've seen so many so many leagues pop up, like the XFL, like the Arena Football League, like the Big Three, like uh, TBT, the basketball tournament, and stuff like that. It's oddly baseball is the one that doesn't really seem. I guess they have the World Baseball Classic, but that's base. Uh, that's that's no, yeah. we don't need to talk about that. Um, yeah, you you have a lot of people trying new things and. I think the ones that, that get in trouble are the ones that try to be bigger than the already established thing. The ones that are successful, I mean, I thought the XFL was pretty successful because they did new things. They yep. tried new things. They tried to be a little bit different. It's like it was still football, but they were trying new things. Right. And they knew that not everything they tried was going to work. And they, if they would have been able to stick around and... I don't know. They probably are going to come back. I, I don't know. There's there's so many like lawsuits well, and things like that. It's like when people say, who are you? It's like... We're not the tour. No. We're not the Cornberry tour. That's not who we are. We're not college golf. This is who we are. Yeah. We could be the cornhole sport of golf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. You got to think of a better way to phrase it. That's not going to work in any picture. Well, I was just thinking it's, that's televised. <laughs> yeah. It's like, who would have thought of that? Yeah. It's, and I know it's downtime, but still, yeah. it's like, really? Yeah. And it's, again, it's just, I, I relate to that because... Look at the enthusiasm of the guys doing it. Yeah. That's what makes it work. Yeah, it's they don't care if there's a camera there or not. No, it's they're, they're going to act the way they're going to act, and people enjoy Sadly. watching that. Cause, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it, people enjoy watching that. That's that's kind of why there's been this big push for oh, there's no fans at the tour, so we need to mic up everyone. It's like they did it, and it's like eh. Okay, we have to come up with names. Names? Yeah, the Columbus team can't be the Buckeyes, obviously. So <laughs> it's because the the Indians are going to be the Buckeyes. Soon. I hope so. That's, that's my push. It's, it's going to happen. I think it, 1942, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Negro League champions. Yeah, you've got the you've got the shirt. Um, team names. Yeah. They anything can. that doesn't sound can't like be an, animals. Anything that doesn't sound like an XFL team. No Seattle Dragons. No, yeah. I don't know. The Orlando golf team. We can follow follow the Washington football team's lead. <laughs> I don't know names. Name, names will be uh, if if you have a if you have a name that you want to send us if you if you have an idea go ahead and go ahead and head to the website that's eke.golf. I'm getting good at being able to throw throw that stuff in there. Just send us submit your submit your names and, and your resume for commissioner. Yeah, send us your send us your best names. Send us your your resume for commissioner and and we'll read them all on the air. Well, I shouldn't say we'll read them all on the air. We'll we'll read the good ones. I may ones have found a air. new career right here. <laughs> You're too old for a career change. <laughs> yeah, really. It's a little late for that, maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to take a quick break. This episode of I Hate Golf, It's Awesome is sponsored by Golf Brevard. Golf Brevard is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that formed for one purpose, preserving public golf in Brevard County, Florida. With Spessard Holland at Melbourne Beach and the Habitat at Valcaria, Golf Brevard provides two unique golf courses with challenges for even the most experienced golfer and the opportunity for someone just coming to the game. For more information about Golf Brevard and to book your tee times today, visit them on the web at brevard.golf. That's B-R-E-V-A-R-D dot G-O-L-F. And we're back. And you're on your phone. Uh, I'm not you on the phone anymore. No, that's actually a good thing because that's something that I wanted to talk about. And it, it's it's kind of similar to what we were just talking about um, as far as as far as the tour and, and kind of something that I realized Sunday morning is it's really, really hard to watch golf. There's CBS, NBC, Golf Channel, ESPN. There's the PGA Tour Live app. There's no one unified place to be able to watch golf. And it's kind of, it's kind of a weird barrier to entry to get people to even figure out how to watch golf. And I, I was thinking about this with baseball being back. Baseball is weirdly, it's, it's thought of an old person sport. It's thought of younger people don't watch baseball and there, there's numbers there to suggest that that's true and stuff like that. But the thing that baseball has been the absolute best out, not just the, the analytics they use and stuff like that and using technology for more analytics, but the MLB at bat app, this is, this is not an ad, but it is the best way to watch sports because I can subscribe to that or I can subscribe subscribe to the TV package or the radio package and all I have to do is open one app and I can watch all baseball games 
wherever, wherever, whatever regional thing they're on, if they're on ESPN or if they're on Fox or, or whatever a channel they're on, I can watch that in my phone. There's, there's some blackout restrictions, but I can watch everything in one app. And when I open the PGA tour app, it tells me that in the morning I can stream it on Twitter in the afternoon. I can stream it on NBC sports. And then the later afternoon I have to go watch it on CBS. It's like, it's all over the place. And it, I, I don't understand it because it makes it so hard to just be able to watch golf. And I know there's there's some kind of deal that's coming with ESPN Plus in the near future where you're going to be able to watch more more golf on ESPN Plus, but I don't think the other stuff's going away. It's like there's five different places I have to go to watch golf. And it's like even even pre-streaming when I could, before you could watch stuff on your phone, it's like you'll have coverage on the golf channel. You'll have coverage on NBC you have coverage on CBS and it's like, that's all in the same tournament. It's like, why is it not all in just one place? It's like, who, who, who's in charge of that? It, it doesn't make any sense. Well, to and, me. You know, again, I learned a long time ago. Um, there's one thing behind most everything and that is money. Yeah. So there's financial reason for that. Obviously I don't know what it is. It this certainly isn't my field, but I'm guessing the other lag, the delay um, and I'm not talking about your golf swing, but it's it's the the demographics. Yeah. They've never actually gone after that group of people, so they are behind in in recognizing that. You know, they run around complaining, "Oh, we can't grow the game. We can't grow the game." It's like, well, who are you targeting? Yeah. That's part of the issue. Yeah. You're trying to make sure you keep that 60 year old playing more so than you're trying to get that. 22 year old to play yeah and that's one of the things that has to change and that's probably you know one of the dynamics of that is how do we get to them yeah yeah because it's like sunday afternoons like like i said earlier i i chose not to finish watching the tournament because i wanted to go play golf but uh getting into the back nine it's like i opened the mlb app because the cubs game was about to start and i was able to have that on the radio right there it's like if i wanted to go to the the pga tour app it's like i couldn't watch it because you have to go to cbs sports and then cbs sports all access and it's like there's so many different things it's just like just let me watch golf like i just i want to watch golf make it easier for me to watch the product that you're trying to put out and it's like the messaging around it isn't great the accessibility around it isn't great it's just it's just a total mess and it's it's, it's Something, something needs to change. Well, there. they're still targeting guys like me that remember dad yelling, going out and tur- telling us to go out and turn the antenna in the middle of winter so we can pick up another station. Yeah. So that's who they're still targeting, and yeah. that's the issue. Well, and to go back to our, our last topic, it's like I think that's somewhere where something like the PGL could ch- just absolutely thrive. I mean, if they come out with an app that works well or one, one website that works well, and you can just watch the whole weekend's coverage from one place start to finish with with obviously they're going to have a they're going to have ads thrown in there but but the way they've talked about it is there's going to be less breaks in between golf you're not going to have the tiny picture with the, the rest of the screen filled up with ads it's like if if i have to pay 60 bucks a year or 100 bucks a year to have 18 weeks of golf on my phone and be able to watch all weekend with pretty much no interruption it's like i'm gonna pay that if maybe it, that's where our new league should start <laughs> <laughs> we need an app. We don't even have a league, but we're going to start developing the app. We don't have team names or players or even a commissioner, but we're gonna we're gonna have an app for you. So so check the the Apple App Store. Yeah, it's I don't know that 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 was a bit of a rant for me, but it was just something I was really frustrated with because I've enjoyed watching golf more. Maybe that's because there's there's been no other sports up until this week and stuff like that. But but I don't I don't know. It's just well, the it next was time, frustrating. Next time you go to the golf course, look around. To see how many people are yeah. your age. Yeah, that's and that and, that, and that's a that's a that's a huge problem. It's 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 uh, <laughs> my buddy Chris. He always it, I, I made fun of him last time because I don't remember where where we were playing, but but the starter said, "Oh yeah, you were out here yesterday." He was like, "No, I wasn't." And it's like I told him, "It's like they just see a guy with tattoos all over him, and they assume it's one person." <laughs> it's like no one else out here really they looks know every like time you. you're there. Yeah, it's like it's apparently there's there's two of them, but it's like yeah, it's 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 interesting going different places and seeing the same faces. Well, that's that's across golf. It's yeah. like you know, every once in a while we'll have someone come in and they're kind of looking at the cart and I can tell they're looking for a place to plug their phone in. Yeah. And it's like, sorry, we don't. And yeah, yeah, golf courses are now getting those, but we don't have them yet. Yeah. And I assume most golf courses don't No, That's how far behind we are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, even stuff like that, it's like, 
some of the places I play, they'll have, you can connect Bluetooth to the cart and play the speaker, but it's like the speaker is so bad that it's like, yeah. I'm not going to, it's like, if, if yeah. I want to listen to music, I'm either just going to play it on my phone or I'm yeah. going to have a, I'm going to have a speaker clipped to my bag yeah. because, because people have figured out that, yeah, I'm not going to wait around on the golf course to do it. I'm just going to do it myself. Well, so. and, and shame on the golf cart companies for not thinking in advance how much would that cost yeah. to put that outlet in a cart? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, it's like that's the biggest thing. It's like my phone dies all the time on the course. It's it's really annoying. Right. So well, you know, it, it at our courses with the Yamaha carts, we have was it Yamaha Tracks? Yeah. That has the GPS, and it's really mm-hmm. basic, but it's helpful. Yeah, it works. You know, my thought was if we could plug your phone in, yeah, I would put a phone holder on every cart post. Yeah, and it's like boom, you'd have it. To me, that would be. Well, now, you, now you're inviting people that live in that world. Well, it's like you don't need the screens in the carts. Everyone has a screen in their yeah. pocket, and it's like some guys carry iPads around with them if they yeah. want to do uh, the other, like the shot tracking stuff. And it's like everyone already has a screen. You yeah. don't need to build it in. You just need to make it easier for people to use the things that they already have. And no one gets that. I know. But again, they they're not used to catering to yeah, that exactly. demographic. That's the problem. That's yeah. where they're all behind. Yeah, it's they're catering to the dem- demographic that doesn't book tea times online. They just they call in and they want to make their same tea times the way they always have stuff like that. So I mean, that that don't get me started. That carries <laughs> over to golf course management and yeah. operations. This, I see the same thing over and over. That's the way we've done it. The yeah. attitude. Yeah, it's like well that's kind of why you're where you're at. Yeah, golf and innovation don't really seem to go together too well. Except R and D for golf equipment. They spend yeah. the money because they get a return. No, oh, yeah. Because they know the guy my age will, you know, for two yards more off the tee, he's going to spend 500 bucks. That's how stupid we are. Well, they, and they know that if they brand it well, that the guy that, that just got a club 10 months ago, he's going to feel like he's missing out when the new driver comes out. Yeah. It's like if they if they brand it right, if they change the colors, it's like that's what Callaway is really good with. They're, make, they're really good with the distinction from the Rogue to the Epic Flash to the Maverick. It's, right. They made them so distinct that if you're carrying around a Rogue, you feel like you're, you're two years behind. Right. So... That was that was that was my rant for the week. Um, <laughs> last last topic uh, I want to get to is um, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see that uh, I put out um, the first episode of Breaking Parts, the series that I'm going to be doing that you're going to be helping me with. Like whether- one point five, right? Really, like the second. <laughs> Semi second. You video. actually watched it. Huh? Yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's 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 a series we're going to be doing for an undetermined amount of time because it's really up to me how long that takes. But I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about about that about me trying to break par and what I need to do in order to do that. I mean, I, I know I've, I've asked you a little bit about like what, what's the difference between being a golfer and being an actual player and stuff like that. But what would you say is probably the biggest thing that I need to do to be able to actually break par? Um, to me, it's to start to get to that level. It's consistency. Yeah. It's, you have to lessen those surprise shots yeah. that typically ruin everyone's round. It's, those are the shots that create the 12 handicapper yeah. instead of the four handicapper who, you know, you miss a green. You might you might hit it in a bunker, but you didn't miss the green by 20 yards right, and you have to try to figure out how to save bogey. Although I uh, think I might be rather be 20 yards right than in a bunker. So. Yeah, <laughs> probably for you right now. <laughs> But no, to me, that's it. That and the, the two things is being consistent. And that to me, that comes back to your swing and balance yeah. and being able to get comfortable. And what I watched you do is that's exactly how I describe what's happened to you. You're more comfortable swinging the golf club now. Yeah. You know, for a while there, every swing you were searching for something. Yeah. You know, a speed, a tempo, a finish, all of those things. Yeah. And now it's kind of like you, you have more of a, a habit to what you're doing. And it doesn't mean that you don't need to change things. It just makes it it's it's easier to change things yeah. because you're doing something consistently. Yeah, and I think I think playing with you, um, we usually play two or three times a week, but usually two. Um, playing with you and having you kind of make fun of me and yell at me and stuff is kind of <laughs> wow. is, is kind of it's a strategy in, in a nice way. But it's it's made me get to the point where if I hit a bad shot. 
I know what I did wrong. It's like four months ago, if I would hit a bad shot, I would have no idea what I did. I would have no idea how to fix it or what I was doing right and wrong and stuff like that. And you just kind of pointing things out to me as I'm playing and stuff like that in a, in a fun way, in, in your <laughs> unique fun way. It's, it's made me get to a point where I can, I can figure things out on my own that I don't have to wait till the next time we play. It's like, I can figure it out right away. I might not be able to fix it right away, but I at least know what I need to work well, on. A lot of that is is getting rid of that attitude is when you hit a bad shot, the sky is falling. Yeah. It's like, no, I just hit a bad shot. Yeah. You know, that's not necessarily what I do every time. I just hit a bad shot and made a mistake. Yeah. So let's take care of the next one. That, yeah. That and your short game. Yeah. That's critical to getting there. Yeah. You know, around the green and you still trying to use like. 84 degree lob wedges. I picked Phil to win this week. Of course, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do that. <laughs> exactly. That's issue number one. And becoming a, a, a good putter. Yeah. You know, that comes back to when I started playing, the theory was you were born a good putter. Yeah. And if you weren't, struggle. Yeah. And it's like, I've realized that's eh, it's not true. Yeah. You know, you can you can become a good putter. Yeah. Uh, but it but it takes some effort. It takes some work and focus and commitment to doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely the one thing area I need to improve the most is my putting. I'm just so hot and cold with it. Some some days it feels easy as as it possibly can be, and other days I have no idea where the ball's gonna go. It's well, and one of the things I encourage people to do, because it's it's something I used to do when I lived in South Florida, and I would have to go meet people at events and stuff, or go see someone play, or go meet a caddy, or a sponsor at a golf tournament um, on the tour, and it's, I would always follow the guys in last place, yeah. and I would tell people, go watch them, yeah. and watch them shoot a 78. And it's like, oh my gosh, they're awful. Yeah. But the only thing we're ever presented is the guy that's shooting 66 every day. And you think, unbelievable. How do they ever get there? Well, at one point, they have been and probably will be again, that guy shooting 78 and missing the cut. Yeah. It happens. And yeah. it's, that's part of, it's, that's why, and I've said this a million times is, you know, it's like dads would talk to me about their junior players, and it's like, well, he's so discouraged because he just played a kid that shot 67 today, and he's 14 years old. Yeah. And I say, how much better is that kid going to get? Yeah. You know, your son shot 78. He has a lot of room. He hopes he's going to keep improving. Mm -hmm. That kid's going to shoot 67 or 72 yeah. as he moves forward. So don't let that... And again, it's just a lot of it is your attitude and your mental approach. It's huge. Yeah. It really is. The nice thing about baseball and football and some of those sports, most of the time you're reacting. So you get to use those reactive instincts. Yeah. And you're not sitting there between shots for five, ten minutes thinking about how awful of a golfer you are. Although some some courses I've been playing lately, I have been sitting there five, ten minutes thinking about <laughs> that. It's given me a lot of time. But but no, that's and that's kind of the reason that I wanted to do this, that it's it seems pretty self involved that I'm doing this and I get that. That's if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. Well, you know, if you keep going you might qualify to be on one of our teams. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the ultimate goal. I didn't know it, but that's the ultimate goal. But no, it's just I looking around at kind of the landscape of of golf content that's out there, and it's it's so many channels, and maybe it's just the most popular ones. I, I don't know, but it's so many channels that it's people that are really really good at golf, and they and it's it's fun to watch. But you never get to see the guy that was really struggling. It's like you might see a bad shot here or there, but overall they're really really good players. I mean, here's a name most people won't remember, but. Lee Elder, mm -hmm. in fact, one of the first minority golfers on yeah. tour early, early on. Um, I can remember <laughs> following Lee around one day um, because I, I think it was his caddy or a friend of his I knew, and we were just walking along, just talking, and I don't think he got the ball in the air the entire day. <laughs> and here's a world-class golfer that just couldn't get it. Yeah. Couldn't get it in the air all day yeah. and shot like an 81. <laughs> you know, and ne next week he goes out and finishes in the top 20 yeah. and makes a nice check. Yeah. So, yeah, people get people are too easily depressed about their performance. And it's I understand it because you no longer have a name attached to you. You have a number. Yeah. And you live and die by that number. Yep. So it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. So. 
Well, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna wrap it up there this week. Got anything else you want to add before we get out of here? Well, I'm I'm trying to make my list mental list of my team names in my head, but outside of that, <laughs> well, you've got to work to week on work to week on them, week to work on them. That it's too. it's time to get out of here when I start talking like that. So, <laughs> thanks for watching this week. This has been I Hate Golf. It's awesome as always. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, stuff like that, and we'll be back with a new episode next Wednesday. Till then, see you.